Ladies and gentlemen, you may be the winner of a hundred thousand dollar prize. There are just three things you need to do. One, watch the following program carefully. Two, listen for the hidden clues. And three, hold a winning ticket in the Irish sweepstakes. <laughs> One, two. <laughs> competitive business system of today, much depends upon the initiative and drive of the individual, and most of all, to the men who create the demand for our multiform goods and services. This, then, is a tribute to the traveling salesman, a special kind of guy, riding out in the blue with a smile on his lips, a shine on his shoes, and a hole in his head. <laughs> this is the Willie Roman story. <laughs> Willie Roman had been on the road for years. Every fashionable suburb knew his cheery face, his open-handed generosity. He was welcomed into typical American homes everywhere. Hello, kids. It's me, your friendly full of bunk brush man. I'll brush you, you no good Nick. Three ninety-eight for a broom, and look at it. Come, come, madam. A full of bunk broom beats as it sweeps as it clean. Who wants to sweep? I bought it to ride. I should have known. Why don't we talk this thing over, gorgeous? I'm pushing a little different line this trip, hon. What are you selling? Me? You? How's about it? Some offer. Fifty-three years I wait for Prince Charming, and who shows up? The king of the hobos. <laughs> We could make beautiful music together. With my looks and your money, we could... What makes you think I have money? Shh, I spotted it wrapped up in a sugar bowl. But... Oh, you stake me to a front. And not only do you get a fancy-looking young husband, but I'll double your money for you. What do you say? Well, okay. Great. First, you give me two bucks for a license and... You look like a tramp. Yeah, I'll need an Ivy League suit, elevator shoes. Who knows, I might start wearing socks. Looks terrible. So, so already. Mildred Dahl, you've made a great deal. Easy, hon, you're sewing it to my leg. <laughs> After the man only did Willie get socks, he got someone to put them on. <laughs> <laughs> that tickles. But Willie was ever a perfectionist. Mildred? I wanted natural shoulders. <laughs> For forty-nine fifty, you're lucky it has sleeves. <laughs> yeah. Well, the pants are okay. Maybe just a little too ivy. <laughs> Overcoming these obstacles, Willie Roman set out on his new career. He was going to sell insurance. Within six weeks, he had sold his first million-dollar policy and rode home in triumph with his client, who was delighted with the protection he'd received. If I ever get bit by a chicken on St. Swithin's Day, I'm rich. Yay, <laughs> Willie! Of course, Mildred was waiting with cheery words. Where's the money? I think I've spotted a live one. See you around some year, hon. One triumph wasn't enough for ambitious Willie Roman. Hi, you kiddo. Give me some skin. What's shaking, baby? Oh, Mr. Roman, I've heard so much about your three-way protection. <laughs> I'm booked solid right now, doll. How about eight tonight? Always eager to service a customer, Willie actually got there at 7.59. Selma! <clears throat> Boy, do you need a policy. Fast. I do. I knew it as soon as I saw those raw red knuckles. You got it. What? What four out of three people had, kiddo. Look, rhinestone heart. 
calcification of the external costalonids. Your heart probably looks like that right now. It's horrible. Isn't it, though? No, no, keep it, sweetie. A souvenir. For me? Why not? We'll take the price out of your first premium. Then I'm covered. I'll backdate the policy. A deal? Oh, yes. I'll bring the policy in the morning. Oh, Mr. Roman, how can I ever thank you? Have a certified check ready. <laughs> Selma found her policy was good only while she was riding in a space capsule between the hours of 8 and 10 p.m. <laughs> Darn fine print. <laughs> From that day, there was no stopping Willie Roman. Fire insurance on my saloon? Don't be a fool, Roman. I'd think twice, Manny. It's awful easy to have an accident. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you're right, Willie. <laughs> you bet I'm right. Of course, word of Willie's success reached the head office and the chief actuary, Lucellus Blunt. Four million in commissions, 80 million in claims against the company, and 37 lost lawsuits. Yes, the head office had plans for Willie Roman. Big plans. <laughs> but Willie had plans of his own. One night at the local Playboy Club, <laughs> He even bet he could sell a policy on the dance floor to the famous Spanish dancer, Lolita O'Brien. <laughs> Come on, baby, they're playing the policy polka. If you're a dancer and you got to beat, you ought to take insurance on your feet. Flamenco dancing gives you muscle strain, and tango dancing gives you heels a pain. But I've got a policy you should know for waltz and rumba and the dodgy. Oh, each corn and callus that the doctor clears means 12 bucks a week for the next 10 years. Cha cha cha! <laughs> hooray! Hooray! <laughs> Alas for Lolita, right after she paid the premium, she had to give up Spanish dancing. She was allergic to roses. <laughs> now Willie's star was in the ascendant. Bonuses and commissions rolled in. He was the hit of every sales booster's convention. Yay! Here, have a mint. <laughs> Yay! Eventually, the plucky salesman was worth as much as the company itself. At the head office, Lucullus Blanc was wondering about Willie's place in the organization. Like every good superior, he had several ideas of how the energetic young salesman might fit into various corporate niches. Oh, oh, ah. But finally, Blanc decided to take the problem direct to the company president, Ernest Heminghor, the eccentric millionaire sportsman. Now, what's all the hassle, Blunk? Just this. If Roman sells one more big policy and there's a claim on it, the company's bankrupt. See? Uh, ooh. <laughs> Fearful of Willie's prowess, Hem and Haw invited the young go-getter and his secretary to his luxurious dude ranch in the Catskills, merely in order to fire him. But he had reckoned without our hero's persuasive ability. For the next morning, dressed casually in tennis togs, <laughs> Willie braced him in hall as he was about to go yak hunting. Hey, boss, you ever figure the odds on somebody potting you for a grizzly? What a knife. <laughs> Nonsense, Roman. That's why I carry this striped blazer. If anything happened, just wanted to make sure you were covered. Nice thought, Roman. Sure enough. During lunch, Willie sold Heminghor an $8 billion policy with his own company. <laughs> Let's see now. I collect if I'm hitting the right kidney with number three buckshot while watching a balloon race, right? <laughs> right. But his biggest policy was to prove Willie's undoing. For the very next day, Heminghor was watching a balloon race. The only match played in that area for 86 years. <laughs> Olé! 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 Oh, lay. Well fanned, Missy. Oh, lay. <laughs> oh, lay. Hey, isn't that guy in the wrong seat? You're right. Embarrassed, Hemminghaw tried to change seats. It was too late. Ooh, that 
tingles. <laughs> Still, it's nice to know I'm covered. <laughs> Alas, that was the end of the company and of Willie's career. He went downhill fast. Frantically, he searched through the want ads, but nobody was advertising for vice presidents. <laughs> then at the next sales boosters meeting, an angry mob of underwriters ejected him bodily. <laughs> Ivy League suit and all. <laughs> Brokenhearted, Willie Roman was carried into his Skid Row apartment to breathe his last. Don't feel too bad, Mr. Roman. Feel bad? Heck, I'm dying. <laughs> At least you leave Mildred well provided for. What do you mean? Your insurance. Insurance? Who's insured? 